in some sense, this lecture has a bit of a feel of consorting with the enemy, but uh, uh, especially for the old timers here who have uh, chafed under the thought of anything good coming out of windows. Um, but life changes, times change, and, um, to, uh, and for someone like myself who uh, is not forced to use windows for anything, it, from time to time it comes up and there's some useful things that you can do. Uh, at, I guess two meetings ago, we, the subject of the Windows subsystem for Linux was brought up. Um, and uh, there seemed to be some interest in this, so I suggested that maybe we could take a peek at this and it would be, while it's not a technically challenging topic, it uh, might be of some interest and maybe give us a little different perspective. So that's what I'm, what I'm starting from. So, um, so I'll have just a couple of slides and mostly I want to do demo stuff because that's sort of the fun stuff and we'll see. So. I guess the first thing is, you know, uh, Linux is so good, why do you want Windows at all? And uh, that's a pretty legitimate question, and for most of my life I would say, well, I can't think of a good reason. Uh, but as uh, life has gone on, there are some things that are useful. Um, so, uh, for example, with a laptop like this one I'm using here, um, originally, uh, what I would do is get the laptop, it usually had Windows, the first thing I do is wipe it off and replace it with Linux so I can really use it for what I want. And that was fine, but um, part of the thing that came along with that was that you were consistently fighting drivers all the time. A driver would just stop working for no reason at all. And you'd go online and you'd look at it and someone would say, oh yes, there's this little thing here, you add this, it's this. And, and you would get it going again. And, and this was a repeated uh, problem that, that could get really irritating when you wanted to do things other than fix up drivers. Um, so uh, then uh, Windows came with the ability to load virtual systems on it um, and to do it with uh, free software, that's free as in beer. And, um, uh, at the, what that meant was that you could run Linux the way you want to and use the Windows drivers, which really worked. And for me, that was a big change and a big help, uh, and it moved things forward. So that was in the era of, of virtualization. Um, then, um, as, as we'll see, when we are looking at the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL, and there's also a WSL2, uh, we go to a, a different paradigm where uh, the, the two, um, one or two, depending on how you look at it, operating systems uh, actually work together and you can use them together and sometimes to your advantage. So we'll see uh, some examples where that's good. So, um, so for example, a few things I've mentioned there, you can uh, normally, the display part of Windows 10 is, is really tuned to the hardware that it's on so you don't fight the display. And similarly, the software that's on there is usually attuned to the hardware you're using too, so that sometimes saves you some problems. Uh, I added that last point there, introduce Linux to Windows users, because that actually came up um, for a project I was working on. I was having some of our graduate students do some stuff for me, and they all came with their own Windows laptop and um, so I put Linux on their machines and they liked it and now they're using it. So there's something else to be uh, used there. So at least that may sound like sort of wishy-washy justifications, but that was the best I could think of. So that's where we'll go. Okay, so the interesting thing is if we're gonna use Linda, Linux under Windows, how are we going to do that? And, and at this point there's sort of three different ways we can do that and they really are quite different. So the first one historically is uh, to use virtualization um, and currently you can get the VMware player or Oracle virtual box. They are both free as in beer, not free as in speech. Um, I personally have used VMware most, I, I have used Oracle virtual box and it seems to work fine. I've used the VMware player for years and it's been great. I mean, it's really done the thing. I'll show you an example of that in a second. 
Um, the second option is uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, that is uh, an implementation by Microsoft that's, I guess, about two, two and a half years old now. Uh, originally, to, uh, to install it, you had to use what they call the builder's system of Windows 10, so the sort of beta, if you like. Um, but that time is uh, long past. Uh, so if you have any Windows system that's up to date, WSL will work for you. Uh, you should look at this like a container, because really it acts like a container, um, in the sense that uh, the implementation uses Linux for its interface, but all the kernel calls go through Windows. So they all get translated as, into a Windows thing. So conceptually, it's exactly like when you set up a container and the container works within itself and then talks to the overriding operating system. Um, so to use uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, there are um, basically two things you have to do. You have to turn it on, which is um, not on by default. Uh, and you have to get the, the particular subsystem that you want to do. Easiest way is just to go to the Microsoft Store and get it. Uh, all these things I'm describing can be done with PowerShell. So you may recall Kevin's talk two, two meetings ago, was it, on PowerShell. And um, uh, basically everything I'm doing tonight can be done on PowerShell. Although some of the commands are, uh, if you're used to Unix length commands, some of these are really extraordinarily long and detailed. So, um, so that's the story with WSL, and it's available now, quite easy to use, as we'll see. We'll do a demo on that tonight. Um, the third is the Windows subsystem for Linux 2, WSL 2. That is currently available in the builder's edition of, the current builder's edition of Windows 10. It really is more of a virtual subsystem in the sense that it runs a real Linux kernel, and then all it does is the Linux kernel then translates, it does all the translations into the Windows system for network and things like that. So um, it's really substantially different. I've never tried it. Um, it. It's the point where it's going to be available on the usual systems, non-builder systems, uh, is something that Microsoft hasn't announced. That doesn't stop people on the net from saying, oh, I know when it's going to be. It's going to be in the summer. So, well, if you, depending on who you want to believe, maybe it'll be in the summer or perhaps not. So uh, that's the be those are the basic tools you have for working on there. Um, so let's take uh, a peek at some of this. So if we get up, are we on here? Oh, okay. So um, uh, let's take a, a peek. The first thing I was talking about is the virtualization. So this is the VMware state. So it seems I have three virtual machines, and you can make a new one. And we'll, we'll pick the top one, I guess. And um, basically, all it's done is dumped everything onto disk, and it uh, restores it back in. Uh, there we are. Okay, so this apparently is where I left off. Um, aha, yeah, actually, that's interesting. Uh, I can see where I left off. It, w it was actually, uh, I set this up because I was flying to meet, I was working with some people in Washington State, and I wanted to do some work on the plane. So um, I set this up, and the work I wanted to work with was on Git. So the, uh, uh, Git is on here, so. Let's see what it is. That big enough to read? No. Oh, let's. Uh, there should be some way to make this bigger. Control uh, uh, Preferences. Font. Text. Ah. Zoom in. Oh, is that legible or one more? Okay. Looks great to me. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is um, Git status. So you can, well, actually, you can see the files I was working on on the plane. And um, 
and, and it works perfectly for that. Uh, so if you're working on a project, you want to work on the plane, you download it onto here, you use the Linux here, and, and that's great. Um, just, yeah, okay, so this was a development branch and, and the, okay, so that's sort of the basic idea. You can do all the usual things you would want to do with Linux. Uh, let's, I assume X logo was on here somewhere. Yeah, so X is working and that, that works fine, right? We'll, we'll come back to that question a little later. So um, I've been using this for years and my experience is that it's been really good. Um, and it is a kind of alternative uh, where you can put it back to sleep. It goes to sleep in a second. And that survives the rebooting of Windows, right? Because the thing's on the disk and you come back and you're just where you were before. So that's a solution and it, it works pretty well. Um, I wouldn't call it the most uh, efficient solutions because uh, you have a number of things that uh, you're working with, but, but that's with VM player at Oracle VirtualBox, I actually have this on here too. It's essentially the same thing. So that's, that's approach number one. WSL is what we're going to really spend most of our attention on tonight because that's uh, um, what, what we're mo most interested in. So um, let's take a peek at how some of that goes. Um, so I mentioned you have to uh, turn the thing on. Uh, I put this little thing in in color here that says search term because uh, uh, that that does make life easy. So let's just take a, a peek at that. Let's move this out of the way. Um, so I'm not real fluent with Windows, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. So what was my search term? Windows features. Windows features. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go, turn Windows features on and off. So, uh, and then when we go down here, can you see that? That's kind of small. But I'll tell you, it says Windows subsystem for Linux and there's a little check mark over here. And in a default situation, that's not on. So you go, you check it, you reboot your system and, and that's the story there. So there's not much to say there. Uh, the next thing was to go to the uh, Microsoft Store, well, that was the easy way. So that this little icon here is Microsoft Store. So, uh, so we can get Minecraft if we want, but I don't think that's the purpose of the discussion here. So let's do a search for Linux. Oh, there we go. That's a, so um, so you, you have a certain choice. So um, these ones are all free. Ubuntu is already installed. Um, and SUSE and Debian, I think, are straightforward. So I don't know what Alpine WSL is. I'm, has anyone heard of that? Alpine's another distro. Another distro, OK. And Kali, that's the, the security thing, right, with all the stuff. Um, yeah. so, um, so, so here we have two options. We can sort of go to the Ubuntu, which is already on there. Or we can live a little dangerously. Everybody seems to like the idea of living dangerously. Uh, so I guess SUSE or Debian would be good choices since I've never done either of them and it would be a real. Uh, anyone want to pick one? Debian. Debian? Debian? Okay. That, you guys who said Debian, if I get into trouble, you, 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 you know what the story is going to be. Okay, so let's, let's see how we go on this. Um, it's most similar to Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, yeah. So it says it's free. You say get. Let's get. And let's see what we get. Okay, so acquiring license, downloading. Is that, oh, downloading. Uh, I'm connected through Eduroam here, so I think we'll get pretty good service. So. <laughs> You're glad I'm not eating up your cell phone, right? <laughs> that, that would be really mean. A month's worth of service gone in one evening. So um, get more info about Fastener. OK, so um, launch. Let's launch. What else are we going to do? Installing. This may take a few. I'm sure you can't read that. Um, but it says in very tiny, tiny type here, installing this may take a few minutes. 
So I could let this go and tell you a little bit about the Ubuntu thing. Let's get, let's get, oh, wait a minute. Enter new, oh boy, let's look at this. That was pretty quick. So, new password. And password again. There's also default password for Debian. It's one of the most asked questions you can go in. Yeah, so, root password. yeah, apparently we're there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so um, that wasn't too bad. Um, uh, but if we try to look at the U, I assume this is not here because we have no X stuff, right? So that's part of the problem. So, um, however, we do have things like SSH and ping. So let's uh see uh, what I want to do is go to my own machine at work and alas I have to type the whole thing in because this doesn't know anything better. I think you can start uh, a Windows from here. I remember how. Hang on. Okay, so if we try to ping here because it's the university. Oh, that's even worse. Socket not permitted. What? Sudo, yes, absolutely. It won't work. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and look, it worked. So um, that's. Uh, Okay, so uh, we did get connected there. The reason that this uh, is that the, all the 130.179 addresses were supposed to have been put behind the VPN. So that's a mystery. At any rate, uh, if nothing else, we see that we're here. Let's let's try something else. Let's. Uh, Those are the public-facing addresses. What? Yeah, but they were supposed to put it behind the VPN so that you had to go through Pulse Secure to get in there. That's what I was told. But it's, it, no, all it's right. for accessing certain services that have been blocked at the firewall, but ping is not one of Ah, them. yeah, okay. So if you try SSH for that, yeah, let's try that. I bet that won't, oh, sorry, let's try this again. Let's try SSH. I bet that won't work, right? And you'd be using that without sudo, right? So, right. So let's... Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, what happened there? Very, very minimal. You'll we'll have to install it. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think so, actually. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have some uh, installs to do. Um, okay, so I guess we have to. The, does <coughs> apt work here, or do we yeah. use apt yet? Yeah. Just like in Do we have to update this, do you think? No. Apt update? Yes, we do. Yeah, thank you. Dash get. App dash get. Oh, it has to be apt get? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can probably well, use app. I think you can just use app. Yeah. Yeah. App get's okay. Pseudo app get. Or, Okay, so now we can try to up, up, upgrade it. Nah, just do install SSH. Well, I think we may have to. It should be okay. You think so? <laughs> okay. Depending on how. Okay, so um, we're gonna do oh. sudo apt get. Sorry. SSH. Yeah. You know install, the... install SSH. Yeah, except I'm not so good at my typing. Yeah? I'm reading the installation manual. It says back up your existing data, exclamation point. Yeah. Debian is usually a minim more minimal yeah. Distribution yeah. By default, uh, so. uh, Ubuntu for sure has this in this, but um, 
But I, th I thought Debian did too, but uh, obviously not, so. Uh, ooh, Libex 11, okay. So we may end up with quite a bit of stuff here. What did you ask to install? SSH. 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 Just SSH. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, do we still have that thing back there? Yeah. Okay. So, honest to goodness. So, it really didn't, we really can't get there now, right? Just because we're locked out by the VPN. So, okay. So, that's okay. So, um, uh, what do we do now? Well, that's actually interesting uh, because uh, this, this is Pulse Secure, which is what the university uses. And uh, so we can connect to that and proceed. And, and that's on the Windows side, right? Outside that's, that's exactly the point. Um, uh, this is a, a, a Windows thing that's doing this connection. So. Uh, Okay, so uh, if it says we seem to be connected, so let's try it again. And, uh, of course, it doesn't know about me yet, so let's say I'm okay. There we go, okay. So, um, so uh, my A1, A plus student in the corner here pointed out that um, uh, it was really easy to do this because Pulse Secure, like many applications, works really, really easy under Windows and works eh, not so good under Linux. It took me two weeks to get the thing to actually work properly, and that was working with IST. Uh, and uh, it, it would be too long a conversation to tell you everything that went wrong, but believe me, it was ridiculous. You know, so, so at any rate. This, this shows you something, you know, that if we're going to use something that's outside of us and, it, and it's a third-party thing and they make it for Windows and they make it for Linux, Windows may, may be better off with the Windows here. Uh, okay, so let's look at another thing here. So I want to do an SC... Oh, uh, I'm going to SCP, so it's going to be from the same place. So let's, can you read that at all or is that just yeah, so... barely. Barely. If you right-click on the... The top bar of the window there, it might have options to resets. This? No, no, just go just over to the, the middle left. Yeah. Go to the middle of the bar. Oh. No, upper bar. Yeah. Just right right. Right. yeah. yeah then go edit or uh, properties. Property. Yeah. And font. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's. Like 20, yeah, something like that. You can read that, right? Yay. All right. So now you have to believe me, everything I said before. So we're going to ask CP from that same site. So I can't abbreviate the name yet. But um, let's see. I need a colon here, right? Colon. This will be a familiar object. To, Okay, so now we actually have a file, a PDF file. So how do we look at it? Ah, so now we got a problem, right? Because we have no software for looking. But, but look at this. What's explorer.exe? Hmm. Well, what about that, eh? <laughs> so, whoop, sorry. We, we lost that one there for a second. Uh, where'd you go? Where are you, Explorer? Not you. Let's do a alt tab. Yeah, that's true. Oh, there it is. Okay, so so that's the guy, right? So what was the story there? Obviously, we pulled up Internet Explorer, and uh, and it did a perfectly fine job, right? That looks good. Um, so what's the moral of the story of this? Well, uh, the, the moral is, is the design of this is that you're using the Linux as a terminal, basically. So you can use all the Linux tools that you're used to, um, but 
you're not using the you're not using the graphics interface you're leaving that for windows and what this shows is that the windows tools that are there are available to you uh, and exactly the same thing that happened with pulse secure happens with other things so suppose you want to display this with um, Adobe Acrobat, for example. So there's a Linux version and there's a Windows version. Which do you think does the better job? Well, right, Adobe's not going to waste much time on the Linux version, right? So what it means is you can take advantage of those third-party things that have been implemented a little better. So there's, there's something to be said for that. So, so and you know, you can, you can look at things like this with um, uh, with the um, with the uh, uh, material that's there. Okay, so so this is our hello. Open up for me. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's interesting. They cleared it. So um, we are where we were, right? Yeah. So, so you you get what the general theme is, uh, and and what you're trying to do there. Um, now, we used it. Let's look at one other thing. So this was the program we ran, and if you run which on it, you see you have mount c windows explorer.exe. So you can see what the c mount is, right? It's, it's, the Windows, and if you have a D drive, the D gets mounted there too. So what that means is that basically you have access to everything in Windows and all the software in Windows. Again, because you're using this as a as um, a container, you live dangerously if you use those softwares and the two things together. You can, yeah. Do can a maybe. do a PWD. What, uh, okay. So that's, that's what you'd expect, right? The uh, MDube was what I yeah. set myself up as. Okay, so, um, so that, that's kind of the story there. Um, uh, so the, the model that I think that Microsoft wants you to use is that the, the Windows thing is meant for development. It's meant as a terminal, but it's not meant as a graphics interface. That's, that's what I read from it. Um, if you go to Google, um, I don't know, is anybody, has anybody used Chrome OS? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, I, a month ago, I, for reasons that are, are beyond describing at the moment, I ended up with a, a, a Chromebook to use, a Pixel Chromebook, a really nice machine. And uh, of course, Chrome OS is a, is a kind of Linux Im implementation. Um, and it works on exactly the same model. So when, when you open the Chromebook, you can go to a, a kind of um, command line within Chrome OS, and it runs Lixi. And you can create containers and, and load it with various things. And its model is exactly like this one. So you do all the graphics with the Chrome OS, but you have this development um, tool to use. Okay, so um, if you go at top or, or look at processes from the Linux, do you see all the stuff happening on the Windows side? Yeah, this just, is just just here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it does shield that stuff, even though you have access to all the files that, and their programs to run. Right. As far as I can tell, the from your point of view when you're here, the only thing you see is the mounting at C or D of those drives, and that that's it. And so, uh, but. But because this is a container, when you try to run the, the Windows stuff, it, it's talking to the same kernel and it, it all works. When WSL2 comes out, it'll be interesting to see what happens. So we'll see. Um, OK, so that's, um, uh, I don't want to kill anything. I quit. Um, so that's the story there. Now, uh, the next thing one might reasonably ask is, suppose you want to use X, can that be installed on here and can it work? So, uh, what's, do I still have my... Uh, I think you closed your PDF. Did I close my PDF for the, for, for the talk? Uh, so, it, so it seems. Let's get it back. Okay. Um, so, 
Oh, ah. Come on, come on. Here. Yeah, okay. So, um, so, so here's this, so we've sort of gone through this, right? All this makes sense. So, uh, so the next thing is, you know, what's happened to X? Because it's obviously gone. So, so what happens when you want to use graphics in, in this situation? Well, um, the first possibility is uh, the one that we've just looked at was to actually use the um, Windows capabilities for graphics with the, and, and maybe that's the good solution if, if um, the Windows tools are available. But it may be that you want to use X um, anyway. And uh, there are some alternatives that work. Uh, so there, you, there are several free um, X servers that you can put on, on a Windows machine. Um, Xming, Xming and VCXServe are um, two of them that are popular. Um, I've tried both of them and uh, the and they're super easy to install. Incidentally, running in this environment, if you're if you're loading in Windows things, typically, I mean, if you have faith in the person who's sending you the stuff, it's really really easy to install, right? You know, the, you don't even have to type make config. It, you know, everything just works. So uh, so you can install these things very easily. Sigwin is yeah, for those who've used it will recognize that. That, that has an X server that built in. Um, so the, the thing that I didn't try on here, but I did try on this uh, Chromebook, is that uh, you can use the, the Linux side of things to, to run a VNC server, and then in Windows you can download the VNC client. And damn it, the thing didn't work. Didn't work really well, but, but the thing really works. So it was, it was, it's sort of like you know a dog walking on its hind legs. It's it's not that it does it well, but you're amazed that it does it at all. And uh, but the two things working on a laptop, like you know, this uh, worked okay. So um, so we could try that, but we're gonna have to go back to our Debian and do some. Um, which we seem to have two two Debian things here. That's interesting. Wonder how we opened a, a second window. Should we try closing this one and see what happens? Or no? Um, no, okay. So, um, uh, so what's the minimum we have to do um, to get something on here? Is it uh, xutils? Is that the package? Good. Trying again here to put something in here. Is it xutils? Uh, x apps. X. Oh wait a minute. I have a note here. Hang on. Oh, I, x11 apps. I think. Well, I thought it was xutils, but let's. Uh, so, should we give this a install, shot? Install. Install. Oh, software. thank you. Yep. 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 You're. Uh, Well, you don't have to get home till midnight, right? <laughs> something called Debian installer, but you don't want to do that because it'll start to partition your hard drive. Okay, so. Well, we seem to be chugging right along here, right? Yes. Does it take a long time to build a database of manual pages? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so do we have, presumably have X. I wonder if we have X, X logo, since that's what I was using before. We do. Okay, so if we type X logo, what happens? Not good. No display, right? So we have to set a display so that an X server can talk to it, and um, so we have to get an X server running. Uh, so I guess we have two options. I see looking at these little things down here, that is uh, we, can, we can launch this directly or we can go to Windows and download a new one and see what happens. So that's living dangerously, eh? Should we go? Should we go live dangerously on this? Let's take. Let's take a peek and see. Um, uh, so, oh, X Ming was the other one that we haven't looked at yet, right? So, uh, okay. so should we try downloading this from SourceForge? Download. Did it download already? Yeah. Oh, that's why. Okay. We're going to say yes. <laughs> what else can you say? Well, this is Windows. <laughs> so I, hopefully we don't need this, uh, that anymore. So. Uh, so what did we get here? Setup. Ah, welcome to Xbing. Guess so. You don't really get much in. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Oh. Hmm. Okay. We're going to live dangerously with this, right? Uh, okay, so did we did the thing launch? Do we have a thing here? Yeah, you got something in the control panel uh, task. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if we go back to Debian and set our, uh, um, I guess we have to export it too, right? fast on this, then I guess we need colon zero. Should be enough, right? Does that look, does that look good? Okay. Let's Hello? Try. It's in your task bar. Oh, what's this? Whoa! Yikes! Yeah, okay, well, I, I look at this as a splendid success, actually. And, you know, living dangerously doesn't always, um, I mean, that's pretty horrible to look at, but we'll, um, uh, okay. So, so, yeah, let's, you know, uh, so you get the idea, right? That um, X really is available. Um, th this guy was, uh, is a different guy you can set up to, I've, you just use it and it works. You know, it's, it's this sort of Windows thing. You can't control it. Either it works or it doesn't. So, um, And uh, my experience has been that it's good. So, look, there you go. So that's, uh, uh, that's where we're at. So, uh, let's see if... Oh, yeah. Okay, now what? So um, the other thing you can do is you can pin it to the taskbar like that, so that um, if so that you can always call the thing back. Uh, you can also hmm. Um, let's we should ah oh, yeah Debian. You can also. Hmm. Pin to start. Yeah, okay. Um, 
Yeah, so now this is pinned here. Well, it's kind of big, but let's make it. Okay, so now it's pinned here, and it's just like, no. Okay, so you, you see this is an Ubuntu thing here. If you click on this, it'll just open up a window with the thing. Oh, it remembered the sign, too. So um, it, you know, remembers where we are. Our tiger.pdf is still there. Ooh, uh, do we have any X display? Uh, ooh. Where are these files actually stored on the Windows drive? <laughs> ah, yes, that's a good question. And, and I, don't, uh, I don't know where and I don't know how to access them from the Windows side. And that's a really good question. We'll call uh, them one magic big file sitting somewhere. Could be. It's really, um, and, and it may change. Mount. Mount? Type mount? Yep. <coughs> so, the top line and the bottom line. Root FS. LXFS is basically, it's a self-contained container file system. Uh-huh. So is that like Lixi or LixD? Is it that kind of thing? I think it's just the one giant blob in Windows file system. Uh, okay. And then the bottom line is, is how that... you get access to everything that you really want to get access yeah, to. Yeah, so this is so you can mount C is available. Yeah. Is that an app though? Sorry? I believe so. What you would want to do is, whatever you were running in Linux, you would run it on a directory in slash mount slash C. Right. That so way, yeah. that way anything, any Windows. files it creates, it's going to put them in C drive. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't see anything for displaying anything here, but I guess we could try this with, well, this will be the last, how are we doing time-wise? Not too bad? Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see if we can. So let's see how long this takes. So, oh, we could have done this before the break. Actually, this thing seems to chug along, doesn't it? That's a, I mean, this is a this is a, this is a two and a half year old laptop uh, with an i5. So it's not it's not super powerful by any means. But your SSD is the determining factor here. Yeah. Yeah. Icon theme. Well, time for a little drink. Oh, I'm going to open SSL. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. well, we made it down to events now, so that's good. That's a lot of libraries just for one little file. Here. It sure is, isn't it? That's a... be interesting to see how big our footprint is on when all this is done. <laughs> eh? 277 megabytes larger, it's in it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's the one neat thing about that LXFS, is it appears to be some sort of dynamically expanding container uh -huh. system. Uh -huh. Oh, crap. Uh, oh, this is... So you saw that it was loading the GNOME desktop, eh? So, so did disk usage show on Legado Linux? Yeah, show? that's that was my next thought to see where we're at. But how long do you think it would take to load uh, tech, you know, C ten? <laughs> to do a tech live install? No. Probably take nothing. I mean, it's uh, I have three minutes, four minutes. It's. Uh, I mean, the download of the Tech Live Manager is really tiny, and um, 
basically it's basically it's a it's a gzip tar file, and um, uh, if you have any kind of decent connection to the internet, it loads really quickly. So, ah, okay. So do we, oh, we wanted to do it to see what we're using here, right? So, it's giving you the whole thing. Yeah, ninety six gigs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope we got uh, events after all of that. So we did. We only have our one file in here, right? So how do you think we're going to do on this? Did I leave the X server running? I hope so. No, I... Okay, uh, I have to reset the display. Maybe that was on that other window. Right. Okay, let's try again. Oh, that's unfortunate. It opened something in your. Oh, it did. Yeah. Where is it? It's right there, the X. Oh. Oh, there we go. It works. Yeah, that's events running there. Okay. That's tiger.ps. up yes. wow. So I don't know what the syntax error is, but uh, nonetheless, it seems to have worked, right? So. Uh, Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, um, so that's sort of proof of concept, right? Um, okay. So that was um, that w that was the last thing on the slide that. Uh, so it was um, to run an X server. So actually, I guess we ran Xming, right? So you see, it was pretty. We did everything from scratch here. So and it was, uh, it was really pretty straightforward. Uh, I guess for uh, incidentally, this if you have a Windows server, this doesn't work. You have to run a virtual Windows individual user to set this up. So you've got another layer down there. So. Um, but um, if you're um, uh, sort of in the Windows user kind of thing, this is pretty easy, right? It's all pretty straightforward. So, uh, and um, maybe I convinced you that, that there is, maybe Windows is useful for something, a little bit anyway. And uh, um, I found that, it, you know, things work pretty well. So. Uh, yeah, so I, that's, a, that's an interesting question. So I believe with this WSL, the USB ports are not mapped, but they will be for WSL2. But I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's my under, somebody, you can, can some, you can do mounts within WSL. So things that you've mapped on the Windows side aren't automatically mapped in your WSL session, but you can use a mount command with the appropriate syntax. Well, not about devices. Not yeah, you were you were talking about block oh, devices, right? No, that I don't oh, know. okay. I, I misunderstood you your question. Character access to various USB devices like that. Well, the WSL one mostly follows the sibling model for device access, which means it'll show up under. You literally mount a magical file system type of a magical device, and you get new things showing up under there. Like, there'll be a way to access, you know, instead of mount C, it'll be like mount devs com 3 or something weird like that. Um, but WSL, it's not actually supported in WSL 1, so there's only two that's a little bigger for the Any other questions? Yeah, I noticed that Tiger's teeth was white, were white. Thanks, uh, Michael. Yeah, okay. Yeah.